So we just got down here to Fetia uh, City Center, and uh, as you can see, it's a pretty busy area. If you get lucky, you can find a parking spot along the road, but if not, there are uh, parking places. And uh, one of the um, hourly rates I read, so up to seven hours is 25 Turkish Lira, and that's roughly like 350 or something USD. So you can definitely uh, park for cheap and not have to worry about finding a spot. And there was a guy in there actually making sure everyone is parking straight and watching everything, making sure it's pretty organized. So that's pretty good. We're actually gonna try to see if we can find a, a large rucksack. So we're gonna head into all these shops here and just give you guys a bit of a view of the city center here. So just as you enter into all this, I guess it's like a bazaar area really is what it, I think it's re referenced as. Uh, just to get back to that parking real quick. So when you pull into those lots at least that one you don't get a ticket uh, They take a photo of your license plate. So when you leave they can uh, charge you that way So when you go in there just go in and find a parking spot and uh, don't worry about a ticket But yeah, there's just tons of little food areas um, Shopping a lot of these shops look closed, but it's just a really neat area to walk through We'll go over to this other area where we were near yesterday and there's actually the whole like umbrella thing that's real popular now. But there's just tons of shopping in here. So our mission today is to get some views of this beautiful little bazaar area. But well, we're trying to find a large bag. Uh, we came with one rucksack but we've gotten a few extra things and we'd like to get some more because we came here in December so we basically have a bunch of uh, really warm winter clothes. And after this we're gonna go to Malta, so we're hoping to find some t-shirts and some shorts. So we're gonna need another large rucksack. We did find a huge Nike duff duffel bag. Of course, it's a knockoff, but he wanted 150, and as we walked away, he said 130, which is roughly $18. Uh, so that's pretty good. We might take him up on that. And actually, we saw uh, the same lamps that we got in Dalian. They wanted twice as much as we paid, so we definitely got a good deal there. We, we paid 50 Turkish Lira for ours in Dalian, and the guy wanted 100 for him here, so twice as much as we paid. Little street art here. You don't see too many good pieces as you go along in Turkey. There's a lot of uh, tagging and stuff in Istanbul, but not too many really good murals. This one's not bad. No luck yet with my uh, rucksack venture. We did see one, and the guy wanted like what was it, 800 Turkish Lira? It was 800 Turkish Lira for uh, 80 liters, and that was like $115. Uh, that's more than any rucksack we own, so we opted not to buy that, especially considering this guy had this uh, huge Nike duffel bag that must have been over 100 liters, and he only wanted like $18 for it. So we'll probably go back and get that not ideal we wanted to be able to uh, strap it on our back um, but at this point we just we just have to have something to move all the crap we're about to buy so let's head down this way huh trying to find some shorts and some cool shirts so here's a little fish market area actually we were uh, watching a thing and it was saying that uh, in the season uh, you can buy fish there and then take them to the restaurants and they'll cook them for you uh, it looks like just some locals grabbing some fish Found a little rack here with some shorts and stuff, but it looks like these are mostly uh, swimming trunks. So here in the little bazaar area, we did find this shop. There was a very helpful, friendly gentleman who did speak uh, very fluent English and he was able to help us. Uh, we ended up getting, uh, Rachel got a couple pair of these shorter gym short type uh, shorts. Just comfies and the shirt too. I already put it on because I was really hot. Um, and then here's AJ's loot. I got a couple of uh, short sleeve white t-shirts and then a couple of uh, gym type shorts as well. And total we paid uh, 65 for, what was that, four, five items? Yeah. Five items, so a little over... No, 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 that's what do we got? four, five, six, seven items. Oh, seven items, excuse me. So we paid a little under or around on average $10 per item which was pretty good. You could probably find better deals, but the guy was very helpful. And, and it's actually, it's kind of hard to find cooler clothes right now. Yeah. Everyone's got all the winter clothes out and 
it's just the further south we move, the hotter we get. So we're sure. a little bit desperate at this point. So yes, there isn't very much stock as far as shorts go. Everyone has um, sweaters and sweatpants and things like that. So these guys actually had what we needed. So we were able to get them. Uh, check out this tree here. It's freaking far out. So yeah, if you're in the area and you come by this shop and you need some stuff, swing in there. And uh, I'm sure they're going to be getting rid of their winter stock, so that'll probably be marked down here pretty soon. And then come uh, summertime, they'll be with the shorts and the bathing suits and stuff. But uh, I think we got a decent deal. Uh, maybe if we had looked around longer, we would have found a better deal. But I liked the guy, and he was uh, very helpful, so we opted to buy from him. So yeah, it was great for us. So there's def uh, definitely different quality uh, merchandise as you go along. Some of these shops just have the, uh, you know, the knockoffs and some of them have uh, name brands and they're like legitimate, really nice shops. So really there's something for everyone here. Here's this area I was saying that uh, has the umbrellas, but as you go along, there's just all kinds of different shops and uh, places to eat, it's really neat. Just a nice shaded area with different food places and things of that nature. Check out this uh, pond. There's an eel and some kois and some ducks and someone's sunken boat. It's just in this lovely little courtyard and there's just more shops to be seen. We got our at least a couple of things but we figured we'd walk around a little more and see if we can find anything else and just kind of look at the back streets. What we're hoping is that we don't find a better deal because then we'll regret having bought the stuff we did. But a lot of these spots are just closed for the season because they're like bars and stuff. And in that bazaar area there was like a whole like nightclub bar area. So if you're coming here to party in the season when all this is over, all this COVID restrictions and stuff, and uh, in the season not so much in the spring that it is now, you should be able to find a spot. I don't know if this is a very ancient theater. It looks like some of those steps over here are pretty dated, but uh, certainly this stuff is dated. There's like a lapidarium where they're maybe restoring it because it looks like some of this uh, theater stage area is uh, has modern repairs. And that's just here by the coast, just by the sea here, where you have just all of these boat tours. They're like uh, booze cruises and stuff, or you know, island tours and stuff. Some of them I was reading that they'll do like 12 islands, a uh, little 12 island tour. Pretty wicked set of stairs there. So we were just reading about this theater and it was actually saying that uh, it wasn't discovered until 1995. Basically this hillside had a guy's home and he had his home demolished so he could build a larger home. And when he was having the uh, demolition done, they actually discovered some of these ancient stones. So then they started excavating this area and they found the theater here. And you can see down there, that green machine is a saw. So they're actually cutting these big slabs of stone down here and doing a, a repair or renovation on it. I don't know what they're basing their repairs off of. Maybe the basic shape that they did discover. But it was saying that uh, in the article, the article was written in 2010. It was saying that since the discovery that this place had just become really like a trash dump in a place where a bunch of drunkens hung, hung out. But it looks like now they've actually got it fenced off and it doesn't seem to be the case now. It looks like they're actually putting some work into this to make it into a nice beautiful theater. And then maybe once they've gotten it all restored, they'll do some uh, shows and stuff here, something to that effect. There's just a beautiful view from up on this hill of this area. We're actually probably way back on the other side there. It was about a 20 minute drive for us to come from our Airbnb to over here to the bazaar area. But there's all kinds of little neat streets and stairways you could go up here and explore. So there's certainly uh, no shortage of things to see. 
All right, so show them what we got. So we just stopped to get some socks, but we ended up finding these shirts, and they're just plain, simple shirts, which is just what we like to wear. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted at the other store. <laughs> but they didn't have. But all they had was um, blank shirts with the knockoff logo, so I think I got one that was a Lacoste, and one was uh, like Ralph Lauren or something, you know? And so anyway, these are actually what I wanted, and they were only like between 25 Turkish Lira and, and 30 uh, Turkish Lira. a piece, which was significantly less. And then we got um, five, no, six pair of socks. Mm -hmm. So for the six pair of socks and the four shirts, we paid uh, 130, which came out to uh, roughly like $20, I think. So there are better deals to be found. Uh, I really, if I wish I would have found this place first, I wouldn't have bought those other shirts because they ended up being like, Ten dollars a piece or something. Right, and they weren't like exactly what we wanted. Right, right, right. But they were what the guy had at the time. Like I said, uh, still better prices than you'd get in the U.S. But uh, I could have just bought in like four or five white shirts from this place and saved uh, quite a bit more. So spend some time, look around, and you'll find a deal. Uh, I don't uh, regret buying those shirts from that other guy uh, because we we helped out two shops today, and uh, these guys aren't really getting a lot of business right now. So I don't mind. As we got our giant uh, Nike duffel bag here, our knockoff. It was 150. He gave us a deal for 130. That came out to roughly uh, $18. So now we can fit uh, the lights that we bought for our home in Spain. We got the Turkish lights. We've got our extra clothes. And, and our bathrobes. Yeah, we got bathrobes, our jackets that we came with. So we don't have to wear our jackets around our waist because we came to Turkey wearing our jackets. But we'll be leaving from Malta, so we don't want to be wearing our jackets. So now we have a big bag, and I think our shopping's done for the day here. We're gonna go walk along the uh, little uh, boardwalk or the uh, beach walk real quick and show you all the tour boats real quick. Some of these uh, boats are pretty impressive, they're huge. We just came across actually next to the parking lot where we've parked. There's a nice little park, comes with the uh, classic uh, Ataturk statue there. Every town has one. Uh, but here uh, we stopped and we added up our uh, totals on, uh, for the day. So we got 18 items while we were shopping in this uh, bazaar uh, shop area. We got four pairs of shorts, seven shirts, six pairs of socks, and uh, our large duffel bag that I just showed. And uh, roughly for all of those 18 items, we paid uh, $100. Uh, so. Uh, not as good as a, of deals as you could find in Istanbul, but we're not in Istanbul and we needed this stuff now So we were willing to pay and uh, We don't regret it. We got quite a few items. Mm -hmm. I think huh? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go over here actually they have a pay restroom So if you're in the area and you need to go to the bathroom, there's pay area uh, restrooms along the way and uh, Then we'll head over and show you a bit of this uh, coastline And yeah, this park's actually pretty nice has this neat little uh I don't know if this is an actual little bit of river that flows through Fetier down to the sea. But there's a few people in here just hanging out with their buddies, having a little picnic and stuff. But it's a beautiful little space to come uh, escape the heat in the summertime. Or now, if you're just walking around shopping, come take a load off your feet. Is that some sage? It is. Oh, a rosemary. Rosemary, and it's in bloom. It smells wonderful. Nice. So yeah, just a beautiful area here. And then there's a fountain that I'm sure is uh, really awesome in the summertime there. Okay, so a quick bit of information so you're aware. Uh, carry your single Turkish Lira coins with you. Uh, they'll be good for things like uh, using the restroom. I've actually held on to all of ours just for the bathroom. And this one in particular at this park uh, was one Turkish Lira, which is really good. Usually it's like one and a half to two. And one Turkish Lira, uh, with today's conversion is roughly 14 cents so that's pretty good if you need to use the bathroom especially if you're over here having a beer or some coffee or something and you're walking around for a few hours 14 cents to use the bathroom that's pretty doable rest in peace donatello your bow staff skills will be missed well here's all these uh tour boats i was telling you they go as far as the eye can see and they just stretch along this awesome boardwalk there's a nice bike lane right in the middle here and then there's a walk lane for pedestrians as well and it goes down quite a ways and then there's all these uh, restaurants and stuff which are of course closed right now uh, not only because it's the off season but also because of covid restrictions there just isn't a lot of business right now but some of these uh, 
boats are getting fixed up. It looks like people are out here working on the wood or they're just relaxing on the boats because, you know, maybe some of these people are just uh, tourists themselves that have docked here. Um, we walked by the other day and some people were having dinner on their boat. But there's just tons and tons of excursions to be had. If you're interested in that type of thing, just bring yourself down here to the harbor or whatever this is called and uh, you'll find yourself a deal, I'm sure, especially right now. These guys are pretty hungry, so they are probably offering some decent deals. Another beautiful square here. This guy's just playing his uh, classical Turkish instrument here. Let's see if we can throw down. Beautiful little scene here along the uh, walkway. Get a better view out into the Mediterranean there. So here's the classic uh, tourism sign here. Just there, thank you. But uh, just across there is a music academy. And also something else I've noticed a couple times while we were here is, see this sign over here, it actually has sign language, the alphabet in sign language. That's uh, pretty curious. I'm not sure why they have those, but it's very interesting. And here's a view of that square. You can see there's a, I think that's another statue of Ataturk there. And there's a big obelisk over on that far end. Let's go see what that's all about. So this monument here looks like it's designed for you to go up there and get your photos with Ataturk there. And uh, the statue symbolizes the importance that he put in the youth to basically keep the traditions and origins of the Turkish people alive. Some of these boat tour boats are pretty silly. Look at this guy. Definitely capitalizing on Hollywood there. Oh, you think they're paying for the licensing on that one? No, no one's paying for licensing <laughs> for anything in this country. The entire country is a bootleg. <laughs> Some neat statues here. They almost look like dervishes, but they're women, so they're maybe like ballerinas or something. I think they're ballerinas, like they're shoes. Oh, for sure. And then here's this obelisk. If I had a guess, I'd say it was uh, some type of war memorial based on the uh, base of the obelisk here. Let's go over here and get a closer look. There's different names, maybe symbolizing uh, certain soldiers or leaders or something to that effect. It's certainly um, memorizing or a memorial to uh, war. Different symbolism as we go around. This front side real quick. So if you walk along this beach walk just a bit past all the boats it really opens up and uh, you can actually see the sea instead of just all those boats piled on top of each other. And there's actually all types of little uh, like shader model, uh, excuse me, shade ramada like picnic type areas. And it just goes and goes and goes for quite a while actually. It goes so far that uh, it gets to a point where they're doing uh, construction and their the roads are all torn up and they're actually redoing it all. So it looks like they're investing some money back into some portions of the uh, seafront here to really boost uh, you know, the scene for everybody. It's quite nice. We'll walk over here to the edge and uh, give you a view out of the sea here. The water is a little um, uh, murky over in this area, but there's a, bit, a larger river that flows out from uh, inland to here. So it's not exactly as uh, crystal clear as you would see it in some other points of the Mediterranean. But it's a beautiful area, it's a beautiful view. The sea walk, like I said, just goes on for a while. So if you're wanting to come stretch your legs and uh, get some exercise and grab some ice cream or a drink or some snacks as you go, this is certainly the area to do it. I think we're gonna head back now and see if we can get our bag packed up and see how much room we got. But thanks for coming along, guys. We'll be here for a few more days. So if you're curious, I think we're gonna check out this little castle that's up here too, so stay tuned to our channel.